Hey guys, so today we are going to make a GPS coordinate pillow and I want to show you how you can get your GPS coordinates and we're going to use the glyph feature that is available in Silhouette Studio uh, to play around with a font that's got a lot of really neat glyphs with it and then we're going to press it on the pillow and I'm going to show you how I use the heat press pillows that uh, we made last week. So this is my favorite website to use and it is gps-coordinates.org. I will put a clickable link uh, down in the description so you can click on it to go. And when you open the website, it asks you uh, if it, you want it to use the um, coordinates from your computer. And I just selected no um, because what I'm going to do for the purposes of the video is I'm going to use the, just the center point address for the town that I live in you could put in your address and you could do this for a lot of things you could do this for your first home you could do this for a new home that you bought you could do it for the place that you were married if you're wanting to do it for that uh, it, it could really be any location that's important to you you could use for this um, and you could actually do uh, a project that contained several different coordinates on it um, but this is kind of a current trend that's going on right now, so I want to show you how we did this. So I'm just going to put in the name of my city and state and type in get coordinates. And so it's going to, I live in a small town, it's going to go straight to the post office. So it's just going to pick the area where the post office is, and that's fine. And it gives you two different ones. It gives you your decimal degrees, which is your latitude and longitude typed out as one number and then it gives you your DMS which is degrees minutes and seconds and this is the one that is most popular and so these are the numbers I'm going to use and I've already written them down and we're going to go to our silhouette studio and I'm going to add in the word home for this project and I'm going to open up my textile box and this is a feature that's available for designer edition and above and if you're still using basic edition i will put a link down below to upgrade if you want to do that if you do not have designer edition you can use the um, font book if you're on a mac or the character map if you're on a pc but if you have designer edition or above and 4.1 you are able to use this um, glyph feature so i'm going to use the font desire pro I'm going to select my font and then I'm going to click this little button right here and you will see let's get the right font in there all of the glyphs that coordinate with this font and you can make them bigger you can make them smaller if you know exactly what you're looking for it'll be faster to look at them bigger so I'm going to make these large so you guys can see too and I'm going to go down to the H's and F G H and I'm going to pick this one so we're just going to click it and there it goes and then we can go down to the lower case and I'm going to pick and as you can see, when you hold your mouse over it, it will enlarge it so you can see better what it looks like. Go back up to the M's. Let's do this one. And the E's. You can see that this font has a lot of really neat glyphs included with it. Let's do this one. And I do, if you'll notice this font, let me enlarge this a little bit that the swash kind of makes it a little heavy on the right. So I want to balance this out. So let's go back up to the top. And there's some little swashes up here. Let's make it a little smaller so I can see. Ah, here we go. So let's do this one. Oops, one too many. Okay, so now I've kind of balanced it out so that home's still relatively in the middle here. And again, we are working with um, fonts that overlap, and so you want to make sure that you are welding your text. So if we zoom in here, 
where these lines cross, it's going to cut. Every one of those is going to be a cut line. And so it's going to separate this M into these different pieces. So we want to make sure we have this selected. Right click and weld. And what we can do is, this one's kind of separate. We can actually take this piece and move it over a little bit so it touches. And then we could weld that also. So then it kind of makes it one, one piece. Let's select everything and make it black. And then let's keep it all together so we will group. And you could have left that little piece separate if you wanted to, however you want to do it. And then we're going to do our coordinates. So another text box. We're still here in Desire Pro. And so we are going to start with our north. We have to select it here. And the degree symbol is towards the top. There it is. And then you can just use your keyboard for the others. And I, like I said, I just wrote this down earlier so that it would be easy for me to type it in here. And you can do as many or as few decimal places here as you want. It doesn't have to be um, all four, uh, just however you want to do it. And then we can make them the same size. So this one right here is right now we're at 8.668 inches. So I'm going to open my transform. The second tab is scale. So we're at 8.668. Click down here. 8.668 and apply so that we're working with the same width and then we can play with it from there. And you'll see that this text is aligned on the left, but there's a little bit of gap on the right. So you can kind of play with it if you want to center it. It's a little more visually appealing, I think, but you could align it to the left. You can align it to the right. You can center um, however you want to do that. So we are going to be putting this on a pillowcase, and the pillow is an 18 inch by 18 inch a pillow cover and on that size pillowcase I found the ideal width of a design width and height is about 14 inches because when you stuff it with the pillow stuffing you know wraps around the sides and so you don't necessarily want your design to wrap around the sides as well so 14 inches is about where I go with this so let's go out to 14 inches and then see I'm going to merge in a picture of the pillow And let's drag this over just so we can kind of see. Okay, we're going to right click on the pillow and send it back. And then we'll come back over here. We'll kind of see if we want home and the coordinates to be the same. So we could do home smaller if you wanted to. You could do your coordinates smaller if you wanted to. If you wanted to add more text to it, if you wanted to put like a city and state down at the bottom or, you know, anything along the lines like that. And I like them both the same size for the pillow, uh, but that's going to give you a visual of what it's going to look like. And this is something that you could use as a mock-up, a wood um, with a spelling 
see if it'll let us make that go away. Well, if we weld it, it'll go away. So if we weld it, that little blue squiggly line at the bottom is what I'm trying to avoid. Okay, so now you could um, use this as a mock-up to send to um, a client or a friend or whoever you wanted to to say, hey, how do you think this looks uh, before committing to it? So I think that looks good, um, and I'm going to go with that. So let's see if we're going to fit on one sheet, and we are. So we're, again, we want to get to 14 inches. If we group it together, we're 14, and then we're about 11 and a half inches tall. So I'm going to first flip horizontal to mirror because we are working with heat transfer vinyl, and I'm going to rotate it so I can fit it in my area to cut. And so we're going to send this to the Cameo and weed it and then we're going to press it on the pillow. Okay, so we have weeded our heat transfer vinyl and I have my pillowcase and I'm using my pressing pillow. The pillowcase has seams and a zipper. This one has a hidden zipper at the bottom and if you are not using a heat press pillow when you go to close the zipper and those seams are going to keep it from making full contact with the area in the middle. So the pressing pillow kind of gives it something to press into. So we need to find our center mark. So we will start with folding it in half one way. And we're just going to press. You don't need to lock it down. You don't need to time it out. You just want to get a seam in there. And then we're going to fold it the other way. So now we have our center mark here on the pillowcase. So we want our zipper to be at the bottom. And we can place our design. And you can fold your heat transfer vinyl in half. And mark the middle line by creasing the carrier sheet so that you know of where the middle is. Just gonna lay that out. And I am using Caesar Easy Weed from 651 Vinyl. I'll put a link for that down in the description. Make sure we get it where we want it. And if we do press, it's 15 seconds for uh, 305 degrees. We're gonna press it for a few seconds. And then I'm going to remove the carrier sheet. And then I'm going to press it for the remaining time, about 10 seconds. And there we go. As you can see, we got nice adhesion. And so now we're just going to stuff it and take some pictures.